Um, I think the main difference is that when you think of things through the human action lens, which is what the Austrians do, you realize that um, all of this matter that we see around us in the world is all of the product of what we do with our minds, with our hands, and how we perceive it. And so I guess a, a simple way of illustrating it is look at a place like Singapore. Singapore is just a barren rock somewhere in uh, the ocean, and it doesn't have anything that would obviously make it rich. Uh, 50, 60 years ago, it didn't have any of the, well, maybe a little more than 60 years ago. 100 years ago, you would not have expected that this place would be where it is right now. Nobody would have expected this would be one of the richest, most advanced, most technologically forward uh, societies on Earth. On the other hand, by the classical sort of uh, definition of wealth, you'd look at places like, say, uh, the Congo or uh, other parts of uh, Africa or the Amazon, and you'd say, wow, well, these things are so full of natural resources. Clearly, they're going to be rich. So if the world was just about the abundance of material things, then um, Congo would be one of the richest places in the world. Singapore would be one of the poorest places in the world. And the quality of life for the average Singaporean would be infinitely lower than that of uh, someone in Congo. And yet we find that the exact opposite happens. Why? Because it's not about material things. It's about human beings. It's about what human beings do. And so human beings are able to turn material things into wealth and into useful things for us, into goods. And human beings are able to destroy those things as well. And uh, our ability to economize, our ability to act in an economically rational way that is productive, that is good for us, that is good for um, our well-being, is far more important than pretty much anything else in terms of um, uh, determining how things matter. So yeah, sure, the weather matters and natural geography matters and all those things matter, but ultimately what humans do is what matters the most. And if you want to think about economics through the lens of humans acting and how humans act, you will, I believe, find a much more powerful analytical framework for approaching the subject than if you were to look at it through the lens of um, what other schools of economics use, which, um, I mean, the, 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 there are many of them and there are many approaches, but some of them use, uh, most of them, I'd say today, use um, mathematical aggregates and they illustrate relationships between, the, the math, uh, between these mathematical aggregates in order to use them uh, to predict and understand how the economy goes. And so... It's a very uh, physics envy based approach. It's let's try and make economics like physics because with physics, you look at a bunch of stuff and you calculate the um, force that is in ex impacted on it, and then you can calculate how fast it can move and how far it can uh, travel and so on. You can make these pretty precise calculations. So why wouldn't we do something similar with um, uh, economics? And that's the promise of mainstream economics for the last 100 years has been the attempt to try and do that. And the way we do it is we look at these aggregate measures, we construct them, we study them, we formulate theories about how these things need to be correlated with each other and how they influence each other and what the relationships are among them. And we uh, make rules and make laws about it, and then we're able to make predictions about how the future happens. So 